All right, so we got a couple slides here um, that are just kind of getting us rolling here. So we're going to get moving because we got a lot to cover tonight, and we want to be respectful of people's time. Um, so, don't, like I said, don't, feel free to jump in, stop us, ask questions, and and again, if we're uh, if we're if we miss something, <laughs> don't feel free to let us know. Okay, so I'll start off our introductions. My name is Haley Bull. Uh, I am from Caldwell, Idaho, uh, and I'm a middle school science teacher. I've been teaching for six years now, um, and I thought it would be really important to tell you guys that I have looked like this every day since the quarantining began. I get up and look very nice every day, <laughs> and I, I'm also joking. I have, I got all dressed up for you guys. <laughs> That's the best part about being online is you just have to make sure the top half is is presentable. <laughs> uh, my name is Steve Elza. I am the 2015 Illinois Teacher of the Year. Um, I teach high school automotive technology. And I'm Carolyn Torres and 2014 State Teacher of the Year for New Mexico and I'm a third grade teacher. And again, have you noticed we have the you will have to open up a separate window and go to joinpd.com and enter the code AMGHT. You can follow along on the share screen, but obviously we will have some different activities where you will need that open. All right, so what are we gonna do tonight? Um, tonight, we're looking for you to leave here with some strategies. So we're gonna focus on social emotional learning and the four zones of regulation. Um, which I'm new to this, but it, it has been very helpful even at the high school level. Um, we're going to talk about ACEs, which some of you may or may not be doing in your schools and districts already. Um, 40 assets, which is a complementary piece. Um, we're going to talk about the differences and what it is. Um, some of your districts may be doing that. Um, and then we're going to um, hopefully get to some community building and e-learning um, activities as all of us are in this very new space of um, e-learning and how, how do we get through this and how do we get our kids through this so so what would we like you to do um, tonight if possible try to have your camera on um, it, again if you need to if you need to shut the camera off we completely understand but um, we'd like that camera on. It's uh, several of our part, our pieces here are going to um, require us to see one another and engage in one another. Um, every question is welcome. Um, we are truly all three of us: Carolyn, Haley, and myself are all educators. And in the classroom, you all know that that's key. If if no one's asking questions, either a we're not presenting the right material or we're not engaging you properly. So, culture here is: please step in. Feel free to to uh, unmute and ask questions. And then obviously we got the chat box. Um, and the chat box is a great place to um, jump in and say, hey, I got a question. So when we do take a breath, we can answer those questions. Um, if you're not talking, uh, mute yourself. Um, I, I learned this uh, a couple of years ago, but if you take and hit the, if you're muted, if you don't wanna go up to the mute button and unmute yourself, you can hold the space bar down and as long as you're holding the space bar down, you can talk, it'll unmute you. And then when you release that space bar, it goes back to mute. I know for me, a person that talks too much, um, I tend to, it, it helps me to concentrate how long I've been talking here. Um, please don't let us do all the work. We are gonna be doing some, um, some small group, um, some breakout rooms. Um, but again, we want you to jump in and, and share with us. And, it, and we're going to, at the end of this, we're going to provide you all the resources that we've used. Um, please, as we're going along, if you have a resource, I mean, that's the beautiful part about this, is this gonna be shared out nationwide. Um, we wanna make sure that we include those resources. So if you have something that's, that you've used, something that, is, that, that needs to be added to that resource page, please, please, please drop it in the chat and we'll make sure that we add those in as we're going through. Um, and if you are just joining us, um, I don't think we have anyone new, but just in case you are, um, you will have to go to joinpd.com, enter the code AMGHT, which is in the chat box and the top right-hand corner, and then obviously put in your name, um, what, 
what you teach um, in the chat box so that we and your email address so we can get you out a certificate at the end of the evening. So what I like to see, um, because when you're online, you don't always know who your audience is. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'd like you to take and um, tell us where you're joining from. So just grab that flag in the bottom, bottom corner there. It, you will have to go to your own screen. Um, this is one of those pieces where in the pair deck, you'll have to, um, once you're in there and you have that code and you can drop where you're at. It, it's kind of funny. We were talking earlier, um, when we were going through this and, and I know I was, I was going to put my flag on the, and then I'm like, hold on, it, this is, there's no lines for the states. Where am I at here? what happens when you get an automotive guy yeah that's okay you know i used to teach social studies and i don't know where anything is either unfortunately <laughs> um also i'm seeing a couple of flags over here in like the kind of northwest area idaho had a pretty big earthquake last week did anybody like you can just raise your hand and i'm going to scroll through participants but did anybody else feel that outside of idaho it was like a big deal because we're not used to that. <laughs> well, I know my, I got some friends in uh, Utah and they had an earthquake about a week and a half ago. I think it yeah. was. So it's uh, definitely a lot of things going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, this is the beautiful part about, online education it, you know whether it's your e-learning e with your kids and hopefully they're all at home and, and so you know where they're at but really you can do this from anywhere and this is a, a perfect example um once you place your flag if you come back to the the zoom screen seeing that we literally have people across the entire country which i think is pretty amazing that we can we can reach out and see people coast to coast All right, so um, do we have any issues with the Pear Deck? Are we good, any issues coming up in the chat box, Haley? I have not seen anything just yet, although there was an earthquake in the Reno area about a week ago, so now we know that. But other than that, no, it looks like everybody, I haven't seen anything yet. All right, so part of this, um, in, in one of my biggest things is building relationships. And so we really have to know who people are and where they're, where they're coming from. And so I always love this question. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? And again, you're going to have to go to your pair deck and enter this in. But I think this is a, this is a great thing to know. What, what, a, what is it that people really desire to have? What can we actually do? <laughs> read minds. I love it. <laughs> if we could read minds, we'd be, it would be an amazing work in the classroom. I've only been on a plane once. I, you know, that that I I can agree with. I grew up um, I grew up fairly fairly poor. My my first time I was on a plane I was in, I was just coming out of college, so it's been a long, I waited a long time. Did a lot of driving. Invisibility. Ability to heal people. We got a couple, a couple of invisibles. Telekinesis. <laughs> that be great if if we could say something people would and it was it was there and people had it they understood it that would be an absolutely incredible superpower i think i'm expanding what i want to do i i, I can't after hearing all these i don't know that i could have one superpower deal first trauma you know the the crazy part is is that 
as we're going through this tonight, I hope that you do get to see how as, as educators and as honestly as community that cares about people, you know, we, we can't make that trauma disappear, but we can absolutely change its projection and what it, what it does for people's lives. So I really love that one, heal others trauma. Yeah, and especially the teleport, you know, now with everyone being in, stuck in uh, stuck in their homes, I think pretty much everyone is now. Even Florida finally went to their stay at home. You know, that teleporting sure would be nice to, if I could teleport in a bubble so I didn't have to have the chance of getting someone sick, but if I could teleport and teleport in my bubble. <laughs> Okay, Steve, how many answers do we have there? Do you know? Did everybody get a chance to answer? I was talking too much. That's my point. <laughs> Told you. Eight, 10, 12, I am loving to have everyone understand after saying something one time. Yes. It looks like everyone's gotten a chance to answer. Great. Okay. So... I'm loving this like team building activity that Steve brought for us. I think this is really cool through Pear Deck and we wanted to give you guys a chance to, to practice some fun team building stuff and everything. And we also wanted to take some time to give you some tools that you can use in your classroom kind of beyond like this fun uh, culture building stuff. And um, we're going to move into something called uh, the four zones of regulation. So um, if you joined us this summer, uh, when we when we did our uh, Facebook videos, you might have seen us talk about this. <clears throat> um, so here in the zones of regulation, we have some checkpoints for kids where we can check in with them or ourselves, honestly, and kind of just see and make ourselves aware of how kids are doing or how we're doing. Uh, the four zones include a blue zone, green zone, yellow zone, and red zone, as you can see. And um, each zone is uh, assigned kind of some feelings. So let's say you're feeling like you're in the blue zone. This might mean that you're feeling a little bit sad. Maybe you're sick, bored. Got a lot of kids in the blue zone sometimes when we're going over stuff they maybe already know. Maybe they're just tired. Green zone is when somebody's ready to learn, feeling really good. Yellow zone is when maybe they're starting to get a little agitated, losing a little bit of control of themselves, but still okay. If I had to identify myself, I would say I'm in the yellow zone today, right now. I'm like sweating, I'm kind of nervous, uh, uh, I'm kind of jittery, right? And then uh, when we move into the red zone, this is when we've got kids who are maybe really angry or really scared, um, and they're they're like completely out of control there's no learning that's going to take place with these kids because they're in a different place uh, mentally emotionally <clears throat> maybe physically right so um there are a few do's and don'ts for using these zones in your school um we don't ever say that any zone is bad these are not things that we tell our kids being in the red zone is a bad thing or being in the blue zone is a bad thing these are just check-in points for these kids so we can say hey um, everybody really quick let's do a full class check-in how are we feeling are we red are we blue um, we don't want them to think they can't feel a certain way because all of our feelings matter um, and then we also don't want to use this as a disciplinary tool like this isn't one of those things where you have like this the chart and you say okay go move your your clothes pin to red or go move your clothes pin to yellow this is 100% a check-in tool so that kids can identify how they're feeling and then they either can ask you for help with coping with that feeling, they can learn, or they can check in with themselves if they're a little bit older and hopefully move forward from there. So a couple of do's, check in regularly. This is something I struggle with a lot. I forget to check in. Maybe I'll check in with kids once a day, but we got to keep going. We got to keep checking in consistently right? And we don't just check in when they're in the green zone or when they're just in the red zone. We want to check in with kids throughout the day because they're going to move through these, these stages a lot. We want to make sure that if we're going to do this school-wide, we're training our entire staff, not just our teachers, our librarians, our custodial staff, our um, kitchen staff. Anybody who's interacting with our kids needs to be trained in this if we want it to be school-wide, right? 
And then um, we also want to try to be transparent as teachers. If we're checking in with our kids, we also want to tell them how we're feeling, um, which is really powerful. And it kind of makes you feel, it, it might make you feel vulnerable, but it helps you to make that connection with the kids that you might not have had, right? And then if you're going to use this school-wide, it's good to figure out a way to, um, to like implement it consistently throughout the school. And uh, one of the ways that our school does this is through um, something called the hand model of the brain. So Steve, if you want to go to the next slide, I'm going to kind of show you guys what this looks like. I have a lot of notes on this, so don't mind if I'm like looking back and forth on uh, a couple of different things. So when we use the hand model of the brain, we, we fold our hands like this. And you guys can do this with me if you want you're going to have to do it later anyway, but I think you can figure it out. So right here, we've got our four fingers. Right here, we've got our thumb. And right here, we've got our wrist. And you guys get a great view of all my tattoos. Great. So um, right here, our limbic system is represented by our thumbs, which folds nicely underneath our cortex or our cerebrum, right? Our cerebral cortex. And what we've got here is a nice little model of the brain with our brain stem connected here. And all of these things are connected, right? Now, our limbic system is in charge of things like emotions, memory, and behavior reinforcement. And they're also in charge of like telling us if something is good or bad in our general emotions and our fear response and our basic, like some of our basic survival responses, okay? Our cortex, we call this like our upstairs brain. This is where our thinking and our metacognition happens. So if um, we are feeling good, we are working in this part of our brain as a school. And uh, when we're not feeling so good, that's when that limbic system starts to take over. Our brainstem is in charge of that fight or flight or freeze feeling that we get. And so when we um, are having a, a hard time, the way that um, we organize this for our kids to give us a check-in symbol is this right here would mean that you're in the green zone. You're using that cerebral cortex. You are um, able to learn. You're in control of yourself and you're feeling good. Then we have our um, yellow. So when we've got yellow, it's like right here. They're still functioning, but they're starting to lose a little bit of control. And then when we're in the red zone, we call this flipping our lid. So they've been triggered by something and that fear response from the limbic system is starting to say, hey, you're in danger. And for a lot of our kids who have experienced a lot of trauma, this triggers much more easily than maybe our kids who, um, Aren't, aren't susceptible to a lot of trauma at home. So this can happen more easily for them. Whenever we're feeling that blue zone, that tired, we just drop it, okay? So it's just like, oh, I'm feeling a little tired or sad or bored or whatever. So again, we've got our green here. Yellow here is like halfway, right? Like, Miss Bull, I might need some help. I need you to check in with me before I flip my lid. And this is, there's something going on. I might not be outwardly showing it, but I need somebody to check in with me and check on me. And then this right here, I like to check in on these guys too, because this is, this is not a good place to be learning from either. So Steve, if you want to move on to the next slide for me. Um, Haley, just real quick. Yeah. A um, couple of things. I know we had a couple of new people join. Uh, number Wait. one is you come in, make sure that you're muted. Um, number two, the, if you don't, if you haven't yet, make sure you go to joinpd.com. You'll need a separate window for that. Um, the code is up at the top of your screen, A-M-G-H-T. It's also in the chat box. Um, and make sure that you give us your name, email address, and where you're teaching from so we can get a certificate out. It's all yours, Haley. Thank you, Steve. I didn't even think to mention that. So now we've got um, a nice little check-in for you guys. So from looking at this zones of regulation, um, when, when we're talking about the chart and that hand model that I just went over with you guys, right? I want to check in with you guys. Steve is going to exit out in just a second. And he, so hopefully we all have our screens up, right? And I want to check in with all of you guys. So I know there's been a lot going on and how are we feeling? Are we feeling like we're in a good place? Are we feeling like we're like, Ooh, I'm a little freaked out. Have we flipped our lids? And are we feeling kind of like down or sad or tired? Um, this might be a school thing. This might be just a general life thing. I don't know, but I know I'm right here because I just said a lot of stuff really fast. And I told you guys like I'm in the yellow zone right now because this is making me a little bit panicky having to talk to all these school teachers. So I'm like right here, I see a lot of those. And if you wanna enter in the chat box or jump in really quickly and tell us kind of why you're feeling the way you're feeling, 
this is an opportunity for you to do that. So we'll leave it quiet for just a minute so that you guys have a chance to, to talk about what you wanna do. And it's an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, it's Tim here. I think you're doing an amazing job, so you shouldn't be nervous. But um, I'm a little bit like, there's just so much happening in the world and we're all trying to teach online now. And regardless of my, you know, school day ending at 3.30, you know, that kind of all I'm sure weighs on all of our shoulders regardless, you know, and not being able to leave or do anything just kind of keeps me in that zone. And I've been in that kind of, honestly, I've kind of gone through all the zones back and forth every single day, but yeah, so definitely feeling all over the place. I think we would probably all agree with you, Tim, like 100%. This has been a real roller coaster of emotions for, for all of us. And I, I can't imagine how our kids are feeling like we're adults dealing with this. And I mean, most of my students are just excited. They don't have to go to school, unfortunately. But there are a lot of kids who were in their safe space. So it's kind of freaky. Got a lot of good comments in the in the chat box as well. So. It looks like a lot of people are kind of feeling feeling a lot of different things, Corey. Obviously, um, knowing where your kids at on a on a regular basis really can can help drive your classroom, um, and it gives you a, an immediate response because knowing where they're at it immediately helps you to take that as you get some other kids going. You can walk over and have that conversation, engage in in that in that. Um, helping them deal with that situation there, help them get back under regulation. Um, but I know for a lot of people, um, there are what we call um, 10 ACEs. Um, and the 10 ACEs um, is a term given to describe all types of abuse, neglect, traumatic experience that occur in individuals under the age of 18. Um, originally, this was a, um, a, 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 the Kaiser, um, a study examined the relationship of these experiences during childhood and then compared them to how it reduced health and well-being later in life. Um, and so this initial study started in 95 to 97 with 17,000 people. And so when we look at this, they've really, the initial um, test was was quite a long test. It was uh, 60 plus questions and 17 plus pages. Um, and they've kind of boiled this down into 10 areas for us to focus on. And so when we talk about ACEs, we're talking about adverse childhood experiences. And so we're gonna talk about really getting to know where these kids are at or what kinds of um, negative experiences they've had in their life that in turn can can affect how they're actually going to react in your classroom when they become dysregulated. So when we look at this here, we if you look, there's 10 circles here. Um, so we talk about abuse, we're talking physical, emotional, and sexual. Uh, neglect, we're talking physical and emotional. And then we talk about household dysfunction. And this is where you get that family-related piece. You got mental illness, an incarcerated relative, mother treated violently, substance abuse, and divorce. So what does this mean for us? Um, as we know, um, through the study, we found um, that uh, as the more ACEs you have, the more it affects you later on in life. Um, and so those ACEs can lead to injury, like traumatic, traumatic brain injury, fractures, burns, mental health. And this, this diagram here really kind of shows how much it affects you. And so these things that happen to you in childhood really can cause stuff like chronic disease, cancer, and diabetes. Um, Nadine Burke Harris, do we have time to show a couple minutes of this video or? We're already at 6.30. <laughs> or 7.30 so, or whatever. I would, you know, and obviously we're gonna put this presentation out for you again. I, I would highly recommend you watch this if you haven't yet. It's a TED talk um, that Nadine Burke Harris did. And it really talks, so initially the, the Kaiser ACE study took place in California. And so she talks about um, 
wanting to do more with the in the medical profession and she her and her colleagues set up a um basically a a hospital a trauma center for in a very um impoverished area and they talked about how they could address these aces because let's face it as as whether it's the healthcare, whether it's the education field whether it's a community we can't erase these aces but we can take and support them we can we can add good to them okay um so i would that is linked in there and hopefully at some point in time you do get a chance to to take a look at that and it is in the the resource page we'll give you at the end of the day too um what i want to do is i want you to take the aces test um it's a 10 question test um i the link is here which you can get to your pair deck but what i want you to do before you get into it is I want you to take the first thought that comes to mind. Often as adults, we tend to dig into things and, and we really think about things and we, and we break down different pieces of the question. I really want you to answer the question on what comes to mind first. A lot of times that first, that first thought is the, is the answer that you should be putting down. Uh, two, I am gonna show responses to this, but there will be no names. There's nothing collected on this. It's just to show you where some of the people are at here when we start talking about ACEs and how different it can be um, among adults. So it is 100% um, anonymous, but if you could, I would like you to go to that link and take your ACEs quiz. So I want you to take a look at these, and this is, this is something that I'm gonna talk about in the next slide, but looking over the, the people that we have in this group, and I didn't take the quiz, but I land in the four mark, um, it, and I think it's amazing when you look at this. Uh, I like to think a lot of times, and, I, and, and as I, we were doing this at my school, and we had teachers going around, and we started discussing about how many ACEs we had, you know, and thinking that as educators, we, we shouldn't have a lot of ACEs. We've, we've succeeded in life. We've done so many great things. And when I started looking, and, and I, felt, I felt really um, alone when I first did, I'm like, man, I got four ACEs. And then as I started talking to people, and, and some had zero or one, some people, I had uh, a colleague that, has, that had six. And so when you start looking at these, it's really amazing that one in five adults experience three or more ACEs. And so when you look at this kind, when you look at the results here, it, you know, we're a, we're a group of 20 right now. And we're, we, have any, any, we have people with as, met, with as little as zero and as many as six aces. So it really is kind of a, a staggering number when you look at it. Um, and I, and again, in the resources page, I did put a, obviously you can use the link to my form, um, but I did put it out there. There's a, an online um, version of that same uh, that same quiz that you can take and it, it automatically calculates it out for you as well. What's important about this? You know, so here's my thing is that we don't need to know what happened to our kids in order to respond in a supportive way. And everything that we do really comes back to, in my mind, four real things. Relationships, which I think is the number one thing we do is building those supportive relationships. Resilience, just because someone has three, four, five, six, eight aces, doesn't mean that we can't, we can't counteract some of that. Responsibility and respect. If we don't address these four pieces, we really end up, you know, we, we let those aces go by the, we let them go un, unserved. And in this kinds of trauma, believe it or not, seven out of the 10 leading causes of death are associated with people that have ACEs. And so, like I said, this initial study, when they did it, it had multiple pieces to it, but it was a long, it was a physical exam. It was a written questionnaire focusing on these different traumas, as well as, you know, male and female, race, socioeconomics, all these different pieces. And, and it, we really can have that effect of saving these kids' lives. They talk about people that this, having ACEs can take as much as 20 years off of a person's life. And so I think it's absolutely, I mean, to me, to lose 20 years of your life because someone, 
because you had these aces and they weren't addressed at, a, at an early age. We didn't, we didn't support it at an early age. Um, so as we, as we transition here um, from aces into 40 assets, I really want you to think about, you know, it always bothers me focusing on the negative side of things. And as I turn this over to Carolyn, I really want you to look at this 40 assets we're moving into as the positive side. Carolyn? All right. Can, uh, can you change the slide? Thank you. Um, the 40 assets is a nice contrast to the aces. As you're, you may have been doing aces, it starts making you feel kind of bad, like everything's stacked up or you know, there are a lot of problems, but the ACEs is, uh, there are 40 developmental assets um, that are a more positive look at um, impacting learning. They're proactive factors and behavior predictors that clarify actions, focus on solutions, promote positive development, and increase the resiliency of students. And the, if you look at the graph on the side, um, you should notice that the average young person experiences less than half of these 40 ACEs. And that's, that's the thing that we can work on as a um, set of teachers in, in, in our, our classrooms. Um, go ahead with the next slide, Steve. Um, the, ASA, the, the assets are broken into, I told you there are 40. They're broken into two sets of external assets and internal assets. And feel free to type in or jump in uh, in the chat box with which assets do you think are most important and what do you think you might be able to impact. As you look at the external assets, um, the external are the positive experiences that students have had from experiences throughout their life. And the internal assets are what they have as individual qualities. And the, the really important thing is being in mind with assets is that an, it's only an asset if the child considers it an asset. So um, you might think they have family support, but if that kid doesn't feel like they have family support, it is not an asset for that child. And if you look more into these um, on some of the links, it will give you more specific information, particularly at any of the grade levels, like uh, having other adult relationships, actually, it means you have three other adults that are not your parents that you have a positive relationship with. Or constructive use of time, it means that you're doing three hours of music or some other activity. There, there's, you know, more criteria to these, but it's, it's just a better to have a quick look at the, the 40 assets as a, um, a big group without all the details, which you can get to um, with some of the links. And they, they do have um, surveys or information of what you're looking for at, at each of the different uh, age levels. And let's see. Uh, can anyone have any thoughts that they want to jump in or notice that they think might uh, be most important or what you think you might have most impact on? Adult role models, yes, very important. Um, and it doesn't matter where they're coming from, whether it's school or someone else. Allison, were you going to say? No. Okay. Um, I couldn't agree more with Tim as a, as a person who had, you know, several aces. It, it was that te for me, it was a teacher role model that really made, made the difference. He's the reason I went to college. He's the reason I became a teacher. He's a, uh, he's a person I think for the majority of who I am next to my mother. I think too, just the ability that as a role model, what you can show kids to show them the world, because for me in my classroom, I have so many kids that, don't see outside their neighborhood and the city is 15 minutes from our school and they've never seen the skyscrapers. So to be able to bring that to them along with just, you know, how to, how to follow social norms and do all these things is huge. I think also under support though, when you're looking at not just other adult relationships, but specifically looking at like that positive family communication, I know when I was taking the survey myself, I was thinking back to like, you know, my childhood, how did my parents treat me and were they both in the home and things like that. 
And I think that so many of our kids are already at a disadvantage with some of these just because their parents aren't there. They're not present. And like when we think about this remote learning opportunity right now, where there's some kids that are thriving because they have parents that are home that are working with them, that are reading to them. But so many kids start at this disadvantage simply because they don't have that positive family communication or that family support for them to be successful. Okay, Steve, Steve, could you move it to the next slide? I want to keep it moving. Um, as you're looking and, and notice some of the things you've looked at, you can see here the most common um, assets and some of the least common assets. And if you're looking uh, at the most common assets, um, you would you can notice that most of them fall from the the inter the the internal assets, what, what kids believe about themselves, um, where the only one that falls in here from external is like the family support. And if you look at the least common, there are a lot of external assets, um, which means we can have a lot of impact at increasing, you know, if, if these are what happens least, these are some of the things that we can have some impact on. Um, I would like to point out that uh, it, it's important to do asset building right from the elementary school because if you look at the chart here on the side, you may notice um, that in the, the charts just from uh, middle school through high school, the highest assets are in middle school and by the time they're, they get, it's a little, almost a little lower every year so that their assets have gotten less uh, and smaller uh, for whole seniors than what we had for middle schoolers. So we want to spend a lot of upfront time uh, trying to build up those uh, assets. And right now is a really good time for that with uh, all the um, online learning and not getting to see your teachers. You wanna move to the next slide? Steve, thank you. So here we have um, a, a, a way to, if you would again do the same thing and we're going to take a uh, an asset survey, but I want you, as you're taking the survey, to think about it as the age kid or that you're teaching. How many assets do you think you might have had at the age you're you of the kids you have in your classroom? And again, same deal as with the aces. It is a anonymous quiz. Um, I just want to take a minute while people are, people are filling out that um, form. We have a lot of cool stuff in the, in the chat right now. We've got um, people who are helping deliver meals to kids in their school. Um, and they're, they're starting to see kind of what's, what's happening in the homes and uh, the environments that some of them live in, which is, I'm sure, like, like it says, eye-opening. Um, we've got... Uh, Let's see, providing this opportunity for students allows them to reflect at an early age and it validates what they can know about themselves to be true. I love that. Um, and the survey, you're, so Corey asked uh, how we're filling out the survey. So you're gonna fill it out and try to think back to when you were the age of your students, right, Carolyn? Yes, yeah. Okay. Just so whether you're looking at the aces or the the 40 assets one of the things that's um kind of amazing is that it, we're really looking at that childhood piece of it as we get older we start building those those assets we start building those pieces into our our daily lives and so it really does um you you can you can grow out of a lot of those aces if you have the right the right supports in place to those traumas and so it, that's why I really, I, I truly love the 40 assets is that it, it really focuses on those positive things that we can do. How many assets do you have? Oh, I only have five. Well, what, 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 are, some, what are some things that we can do very quickly to support those and grow those assets? Understanding that a lot of our aces are the backside, it's, it's what's causing that lack of, that lack of assets, so. Um, by the way, this seems like a, a good opportunity to bring up a question that Corey mentioned earlier. Um, 
how young do you guys think is too young to go over aces with kids? So 40 assets seems like a pretty friendly um, thing to, to talk to kids about a little bit easier. When is a good time to start talking about aces with them? I personally, I, I kind of think that it, it, it's almost like a sixth grade, middle schoolish um, type of age because before that, it, it's it's too it's I would call it too traumatizing to have answer those questions. Whereas you know, in really in the middle school, usually that's the age where we've started doing those anonymous surveys of are you drinking, are you smoking, some of those other things that um, students are kind of willing to to answer to and not feel embarrassed just answering them, even if they are anonymous or other things like that. That would my be my take. I think looking at these, what I really want you to do is, is look at those 10 aces and really look at some of these, the, the assets that you can affect as an educator, as a community member, as a neighbor, um, and start thinking about the conversations you have with kids. I don't think it's, I think there's definitely an age where it's too early to get into some of these. But it's, you know, just in that relationship building, in that conversation you have one-on-one, -on -one, you can kind of pick through these little things. And a lot of kids will have, I shouldn't say a lot, um, but we have a lot of reporting now. We have a lot of access at our fingertips, fingertips as teachers to really see some of these and, and, and pull pictures out of that and lead our conversations. It's, you know, we're going to talk about, go ahead, I'm sorry. So I think it's important to look at these and really help drive your conversations um, because you can, you can identify where they're lacking and where, they're, where they need support just by that relationship building, that conversation piece of it. And Carolyn, it looks like we have 19 responses right now, but it, as we look down through, um, we can start seeing where our major um, assets are at. And where our weak assets are at, which is, you know, the thing to look at because, you know, those lower things are what. Scroll all the way down. Can you get to the other uh, screen where, yeah. So it looks like, as you know, as you look at it, um, we have a large group from 11 to 20, but you, we have the group where there were zero to 10 assets or 20 to 30 assets and 30 to 40 assets. And this is a really important uh, look at because that is the data I want to show you on our next slide. Yeah, that's the amazing part. Half of us, half of us have the, are, are in un, 20 assets or less. Which, that is what the data had shown. Okay, and let's see. Next slide is here. Um, really big slides. Um, Look at, you know, the, these are the same groupings of 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40. And the first slide shows uh, your choice of thriving behaviors from about three behaviors up to six behaviors. How much more the higher assets means they're choosing um, better behaviors like valuing diversity, helping others, succeeding in school, maintaining your health overcoming adversity, having delayed gratification. Whereas if you look at the assets and risky behavior, you can see the risky behavior goes from about eight behaviors down to less than one risky behavior if you've gotten the assets built, built up to in the 30s. Um, and so really you can kind of look at these two graphs together and say, well, there's about seven to 10 behaviors that most people are participating in with them where do we want them to fall? Those thriving behaviors by getting, uh, see if we can build the assets up or uh, let them stay, you know, and, um, and diminishing the, the risky behaviors. And the risky behaviors are your uh, drinking, smoking, drinking and driving, sexual activity, antisocial, depression, uh, suicide attempts, and, and all of those sorts of things. Um, I'm going to let us go ahead on to the next slide just for time wise. I want to make sure we get to a few more things. 
um, there are suggestions for teachers of what can you do to improve the assets. And there are, are six big global sharing power, challenging growth, expressing that you care, providing them support, expanding their possibilities. And uh, Steve, and did you want to jump in and mention a couple of smaller? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, you know, when we look at that, it, I, I love this because it's a global perspective and then it's a, um, a microscopic perspective, you know, what we can do in the classroom or if you're an administrator, what you can do one-on-one -on -one with kids or, you know, when you're in the hallways. But, you know, it, I, a lot of people use this and it really does make a difference. You know, high fives or fist bumps or I've seen picture, I've seen people do, you know, do you want a, do you want a fist bump? Do you want a hug? Do you want a, you know, what, what do you want coming into class? But it's that entering and exiting class and starting that relationship off on a positive note calling each student by name daily. You know, I, I try and make sure, I make it a conscious effort every single class period to make sure that I call on every kid, whether it be a, a asking them to participate in the conversation or to give them praise. And that's where praising those accomplishments, no matter how small they are, that praise goes a long way. Engaging students, peers, parents, coaches, to identify what makes kids tick. Remember what I talked about. You never know who these kids are, are, are sharing their information with. These, when we start looking at the 40 assets and the aces, you can find out a lot about these kids just by asking the right questions. And then assigning daily and weekly responsibilities to kids. You know, making them responsible for what they do is, is extremely important. As much as, you know, we think that kids don't want it, that structure is what a lot of kids need and so building that structure in the classroom is important and make it fun you know we can always turn that stuff to make it a fun thing and so these are great you want to go ahead to the next slide um so maybe we can uh let's say answer in the chat chat box where you know where our time is getting closer to an end and there's a couple we want to get to social emotional but maybe if you can think about how do you think you can increase your developmental assets of your students? Do you have some successes to share? Or what strategies or ideas do you think you could implement right away? If you could add those into the chat boxes, we, that would be great. And we can um, discuss these in a little bit, maybe uh, come back, but I wanna make sure we get to our social learning. Um, in the next uh, slide. And I'll hand that over to you, I think, Kaylee, right? Yeah, awesome. And I did post those questions in the chat box. So if you guys want to keep, um, to keep going with those, they are right there. So those are the questions that Carolyn posted. So moving on, we have a nice little chart for you on the next slide, which is um, a social emotional learning competi competencies chart. Um, so, if you guys have heard the abbreviation SEL, that's what this is. We've got um, an area and this circle down here at the bottom kind of shows us that we are trying to move kids. Um, we want them to be good at all of these things. We want them to be good at those things when they're in the classroom um, and then throughout the school and then even moving into their homes and communities. So um, I am just gonna kind of uh, skim over this one really quickly because if you want, you, you're welcome to pause this in the recording when you're watching it later and take a picture of this or go to their website and you can look through this a little bit more. But um, we want kids to be um, sufficient at these things and we wanna help check in with them just like we did with the, the hand model. So Steve, if you just wanna jump to the next slide, we're gonna do a super quick check-in again. So we're gonna see how everybody feels really quickly. We're gonna jump out of the PowerPoint really quick, do another quick check-in, because like I said, it's important to check in. I'm feeling a lot better, I'm less sweaty now, so that's good. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you, uh, Carolyn and Steve, but I'm feeling a lot better than when we started and um, I'm liking this. So um, that's all, we're not gonna talk about it much longer. Um, I don't think that we have time to do our breakout session questions, unfortunately, but Steve, if you just want to jump back in there, uh, I do want to leave you with some of these questions as we 
um, start to move towards the end of our time together. So um, people are all going to be in this at kind of different points in their social, social emotional learning stuff for their school. So I wanted to just ask you guys, um, you know, if you haven't really done much with this yet in your school, how could you incorporate your knowledge about we've, what we've learned today in your day-to-day -day classroom or bring it to your school and present it to your whole group? Um, how can you interpret those ideas if you're at a little bit of a higher level with this? How can you interpret those ideas so that they could work in an online environment? Because that's kind of where we're at now. And then what strategies can we use with our students to help them learn how to cope and self-regulate in and out of the classroom? So we want to move them from our classrooms into that community, just like we said before. So um, you're free to, to keep putting that stuff in the chat box as well. But um, these are the questions that we want you to leave with and be able to answer with your own schools. So. And I know Haley, you know, as we're, as we're going through, you know, if people want to hop in and talk, um, we are going to hang around. Um, we'll, I'll hang around for 10 or 15 minutes afterwards if someone wants to talk a little bit further. Um, but as we're going through this stuff, I, this was extremely like I, I, I knew we use a 40 assets in our high school and in, in, in this conversation, you know, Carolyn brought up the 40 assets and I was like, holy moly, this is something great. And it really sparked a great conversation between my principal and some of the administration and, and myself and, you know, delving into some of this 40 assets really, um, I think it's going to put a positive spin on the, the ACEs that we're, that we were currently looking at and focusing on. Absolutely. And that's, I, had, I hadn't heard of 40 assets either. So it was really cool to learn about that from Carolyn and move forward with that. Um, do we want to go to the resources page really quick? Because we only got about a minute left. Um, and we want to respect your time, like Steve said at the beginning. So we're going to leave this up for just a second. Again, if you want to come back to this later after the recording's done and pause it on here, we've got a QR code for you as well as a link to Google Drive, which I'm going to throw in the chat really quick. And if you guys want to go to our, um, to our Google Drive where we've put all of our resources, you are welcome to do that. You guys will have access to put in suggestions and comments so that if you have other resources for us, then you can um, get in there and, and add a few things. Um, and then do you want to head on to the next slide so we can talk about the awesome other opportunities that they have for online learning? So, uh, obviously if, if you, if this is your first time joining us, um, welcome. We hope to see you back and again in, in two weeks. And so if you, if you notice, we take a week off, um, in April, uh, 13th will be our first Twitter chat. So we usually start with a, a chat, a conversation about um, our next one will be encouraging academic learning and risk taking. Um, and then the following that Thursday, uh, we'll have another webinar that will focus on the same topic. And then if you look, we got a whole calendar and it, like I said, about every two weeks, we have a, a Twitter chat and a webinar. It's going to be great. We've got Rachel, Corey, and Jerry hosting the Twitter chat um, two Mondays from now. And then Anthony, Debbie, and Callie are going to be working on the next webinar. And they're all really cool. So um, it is 7 o'clock. So any last words, Steve or Carolyn? No, I, I want to thank you. There's uh, quite a few new faces today, and I, I absolutely love that. Um, and I hope that if you got questions or you got anything you want to talk about, like I said, I'll hang around. Um, we'll hang around and try and answer any of those, or hopefully we can spark a good conversation or some good resources. But thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. Yes, just a, a big thank you. And, and you shared some great ideas as well. Yeah, awesome talking with all of you guys about this. It's, it's good stuff.